Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Footprints of the Creator, our third in our series of programs. Your host for this evening is me, Yusuf, and brother Abdul Qadir. Assalamu alaikum. And today we will go on to discuss the creation of the universe. According to the Islamic doctrine, that creation is a process of transformation of quality into quantity. Just remember this, a transformation of quality into quantity. And we will explain this as we go along. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly in Surah 6 verse 14, Allah fatiru samawati wal ard, that Allah is the originator of the heavens and earth. And the word fatir incidentally means to create out of non-existence, to create out of nothing. In Surah 2 verse 117, again we are told, to him is due the primal origin of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, all he says to it be, and it is. And the word here is used, Badi, Badi samawati wal, which also means to create from nothing. So when Allah says in Surah 36 verse 82 again, Verily, when he intends a thing, his command is, be, and it is. So we find that what we are being told here is that basically from non-existence, Allah created this universe by the command, kun fayakun. All right, Yusuf, that's an interesting point. Uh, <coughs> according to, as you said, the Quran, uh, Allah speaks about existence from non-existence. Okay? Now, we, we from, uh, let's look from a scientific point of view. Science says, according to the, 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 the law of science, that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It is merely transformed into from one form to another. Now, it talks about, it it's goes from the postulation that matter is eternal, ac according to science. Is there any basis in science of the concept of existence from non-existence? Or does that, the Quranic uh, statement that Allah created existence from non-existence, does that conflict with science in any way? Uh, actually, uh, as we discussed at the last time, when we discussed the creation of the universe, according to science, when they discuss the origin of the universe, they can only describe a point of time after the actual point of creation. Okay. At the point of creation, they find that it is a point of infinite density. Now, once you postulate a point of infinite density, by science, this implies that the laws as we know them in this universe break down. Mm. In other words, there is no law at that point. So because of this, science is at a loss to describe what occurs at this point or before that. However, there is a growing understanding among scientists, and this is from evidence that they have found, that in nuclear accelerators, they have noticed the occurrence or the spontaneous occurrence of matter. Now this is the creation of matter from nothing, basically. Really? We find that you have a production of a, a quark, what they call, which is the fundamental particles of the basis of the atom, and anti-quarks, which is antimatter, which we discussed last time. So we find the production of matter and antimatter, a pair of matter and antimatter, which exist for a point in time, and then they unite again, and they annihilate each other and disappear as energy again. So the fact that there is in science proven that matter comes into existence out of nothing. So they accept it scientifically. They do accept it that this is a definitely what happens. Mm. Now this occurs spontaneously. spontaneously. Now the question the scientists are asking is, is it plausible to apply such a concept to the creation of the universe, which is so phenomenally, you know, much more vast mm. and more complicated than just a arrival of a quark and anti-quark. And this is where the difficulty arises to consider that this could have occurred spontaneously. So this is the point, that this is not rational. But in theory, they do accept that it is possible for matter to come into existence from non-existence. So this is definitely scientifically accepted. Okay. Right. So we see from this Quranic ayah that I've quoted that the heavens and the earth were created by Allah's will or command. Allah says, when He intends a thing, His command is, be, and it is. So it comes from the command of Allah, that we know so far. Further on, if we study the hadith of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked by one sahaba, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did Allah first create? And the Prophet replied, the first thing that Allah created was the nur of thy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has said also that I am from the light of Allah and the entire universe was created from my light. 
Now, this is a universally accepted hadith, eh? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question, There's no question about question. it. The authenticity, authenticity can be traced, and it is a very authentic hadith. And also, if you know, if people want to question hadith, this can be very adequately deduced from the Quran as well. I'll give the references. Surah 3, verse 83, where Allah says that the entire cosmos is Muslim. And Surah 4, verse mm. 163, where the Prophet is asked to declare, I am the first Muslim. So, which implies that the Prophet ﷺ is the first to be created. And furthermore, we know that the Prophet ﷺ has been addressed in the Quran as Sirajim Munir, as Nur Awal, Nur, you know, this is a common terminology applied to the Prophet ﷺ. So, there is no controversy as far as the beliefs are concerned about this light. Sorry, just. And by, just uh, by Muslim, you say you mean <coughs> the entire universe has been created submitting to Allah. The That's word Muslim means mean. to submit I see. to Allah. In actual okay. meaning, it means to submit to Allah. But of course, the word used in the Quran is very explicit. Mm. It is said Muslim. So, you know, there is no controversy about that. So, we see that the Prophet ﷺ has described that he is the light from Allah and the entire cosmos was created from his light. Now, in Surah 24, verse 35, Allah says, Allah nur samawati wal ard, that Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Now perhaps, you know, we must try and understand what do we understand when Allah says He is the light of the heavens and the earth. Now instead of getting into metaphorical and allegorical interpretation, let us understand this Quranic ayah as it is, in its literal sense, to avoid any confusion and to be on the safe side. Because the Quran is not ambiguous. So Allah says He is the light of the heavens and the earth. And now what do we understand by Allah being the light of the heavens on and and the earth, and in which manner is this presented to us? Yeah, I think, I think firstly, when you talk about light, firstly, to just to uh, define the concept of light, uh, according to our knowledge, limited as it is, the visible spectrum of light is divided when it's, when they divide the light uh, via, via, through a prism, is divided into the seven colors. That is the visible spectrum of light, that is, that, that, that is what we can see. But there's a, another aspect of light, which is the invisible spectrum, the imperceptible part of light. That is the, the light which is made up of alpha rays, beta rays, delta rays, x-rays, infrared, gamma, it goes on. There's so many aspects to light which is not visible or perceptible to the human being or to the human eye. So we don't, each of these parts all have got completely different properties, completely different constituents, they all behave differently, but yet Collectively, they are all classified as being part of light. So when you say Allah is the light, I, I think we mustn't visualize it like what we think of light. It is, it, it, it is in a form that man does not quite appreciate and understand because our knowledge of exactly what light is, is really quite uh, inadequate. Yes, I think um, when we talk of Allah being the light of the heavens and earth, first of all, as you said, our understanding of light as it is is so varied. Now what do we understand when we say Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth? Now we know that Allah is neither physical nor spiritual. He's not energy. He is not mind. He is nothing that we know of because this is explicitly stated in the Quran that there is none like unto him. There is nothing can even be compared to Allah. So in terms of if you understand it for our human understanding as light, it is something that is imperceptible. It is something that is so subtle, that is so uh, pure that it cannot be explained in human terms. But just to give us some understanding, Allah has described this attribute as light. And for us, our, our understanding, what we may deduce is that the primary attribute of Allah is absolute quality and zero quantity. Mm -hmm. This much we can deduce, that He is absolute quali quanti uh, quality. What this quality is, only Allah knows. But at least we have some conception of this quality. Now going on to creation of the universe, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, O oh Prophet, tell us about the creation of this universe. And in the Hadith we are told, that the Prophet ﷺ said that before Allah created the universe, there was only Allah. And besides Allah, so to speak, there was non-existence. Now by this we understand that Allah is existence personified. He is the existence. For our understanding, we may consider that Allah is light. Now, this means if Allah is light, then existence personified as we understand it is light. So therefore, non-existence has to be darkness. If we consider that Allah is light, then Allah's will must also be light because light only emanates from light. So when Allah willed this universe, this whole universe came into being. And let us see how this came about and get some understanding of how this universe was created. 
The reality of course is only known to Allah. We can only explain in terms of our understanding and what we have from the Quran and the Sunnah. Now when Allah wills this universe to come into being, His will, so to speak, projected itself onto the dark canvas of non-existence. And as a result, a point of light was created on this canvas of non-existence. Just as if one shines a torch in a pitch black night, one finds a point of light being originated. In like manner, when Allah willed, His will projected itself onto this canvas of non-existence and a point of light was created. And this we are told is the first light of creation or the Nur al-Awwal or the Nur Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa which was the Nur of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And from this light was created the entire universe. So we see that from this light, how does the entire universe come about? It is by the process of the transformation of the imperceptible, the intangible, the sublime and refined light, which we are told, that becomes coarser and coarser, undergoing phase transformation. And in this way, the entire universe came into being. Okay, Yusuf, that's, that's a very fascinating point you brought up, that existence came out from a point of light. That is what the born of the Hadith, that's born of what, by, by the Quranic verse. But um, again, this program being science and Quran, um, I, I must ask you, how does it fit in with our modern state of knowledge from a scientific point of view? Does it correlate with, which, with the scientific theory with regard to the uh, existence of the universe from a point of light? Look, it is absolutely consistent. I'll just give you an example before I go on to explain. When Einstein was asked how was the universe created, he said, look, I am a scientist, I cannot tell you because I wasn't there to see it. But however, when the people pushed him and said, you know what, you're a human being, you must have some concept of how this universe created. Mm. So being pushed into a corner, he said, okay, just speaking as a human being, my understanding of the creation of the universe is that it originated as a point of light in intense motion. Yes. And it says that the intensity of this light projected itself in terms of extension and became space. Mm -hmm. The motion of this light projected itself in terms of duration and became time. And this is how he thinks that space-time was created. Now, if we analyze, in fact, the, 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 what we understand from science of the creation of the universe, they say they originated from a point of high energy, of near infinite density. energy, density. This is pure energy. And they de uh, define that this energy is what became transformed into matter. So energy is convertible into matter, matter is convertible into energy. This is absolutely acceptable. And even we know, even at the state of the Big Bang as it is known, there was intensity of infinite density and then with the explosion there was the motion so there as well the intensity became we could understand being projected as space and the motion became projected as time and in this way space time was created to understand it very simply i gave the example the last time but just for the sake of those who haven't listened that we know that if we heat a solid it becomes a liquid if we heat a liquid it becomes a gas if we heat a gas it becomes a flame and turns into molecules and on further heating, it is converted into the more finer uh, states in which it arises, and that is the form of atoms. If we heat the atoms further, they are broken down into the subparticles, electrons and the neutrons. And on heating this, it is further converted into the subparticles, which are the quarks. And then we get the formation of what is known as antiquarks and quarks, which is matter and antimatter. And the matter and antimatter unite, and this results in total annihilation of matter and the production of pure energy. So matter is converted into energy and the creation of the universe is simply a reversal of this process where the initial point starts from light or pure energy and it transforms into coarser and coarser forms going to the various processes until it comes down to the physical universe as we know it. And an interesting point is that when we find that this point of light is transforming quality into quantity as I said, we find this place, the transformation as we discussed last week from science as well is that it is at the state of high energy. From light, it becomes a state of high energy, which is temperatures going into billions of degrees of Celsius. So, Joseph, let me just clarify. So, in other words, what you're saying, any and every single object in this universe, subjected to sufficient amount of heat, becomes basically quarks, anti-quarks, 
energy. Anything and everything. Absolutely. Basically. The everything matter is, is converted energy. to energy. I mean, Einstein said anything E is equal to mc squared. So yes. Einstein postulated that every mass has an associated energy. Mm. In other words, every mass can, matter can be converted to energy and okay. energy can be converted to matter. So this is ex perfectly acceptable according to science. Now, if we see this transformation of quality into quantity, as we said from science, they mm. say the universe started from a point of near infinite density, pure energy. And then it became coarser and coarser as the universe cooled down. And as this universe expanded, we get temperatures going into billions of degrees. And as it further cooled down, we get transformation of light to fire. And as it is cooling down, became atoms became matter. And finally, the condensation of the universe as we know it from gas and into the world as we know it today. And an interesting point is that if you consider the creation, we find at the point of light, at this point, we find that angels were created because they were created from pure light. And as this transformation cooled down, we get the formation of fire. And at this point, the jinns were created because the universe was suitable for their creation. And thereafter, when the universe had cooled sufficiently to allow matter to arise, we get the origin of man being created. So it fits in perfectly with the description from Quran of the angels being created first, then in succession the jinn being created, and man of course we know has been the last to arrive in terms of the physical universe. So we see then that the creation of the universe according to Quran, according to Sunnah, is a transformation of quality into quantity, which is perfectly consistent with the knowledge we have today. And one may ask the question, how was it possible for the Quran and for the Prophet to have stated these sublime facts 1400 years ago. And we know the state of knowledge at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was not at that point in any case. And these discoveries were only made in very recent times. So it only points to the conclusion that verily the Quran is ultimately from Allah and has only a divine origin. We've discussed now, like you said, the creation of the universe. Let us look now at the universe itself. Is it static? Is it in a state of contraction or is it expanding? One of the most important and significant discoveries of modern science is that the universe actually is in a state of expansion and that too at tremendous rates. This belief is firmly established and has been universally accepted. What does the Quran have to say with regard to the universe and its nature? For that we need to turn to Surah 51 verse 47 and I quote, The heavens we have built with power. Verily, we are expanding it. The Arabic word used in this is Mursi'un. Now, the interpretation of the old commentators was Mursi'un meaning generous. Now, this interpretation was given because of a lack of scientific understanding with regard to the heavens and the earth. But the, you know, the generally accepted interpretation of the word Mursi'un means to make wider, to extend, or to make more spacious or expand. So the verse would mean, as I've just read out, we are verily we are expanding the heavens and the earth. And this is what the Quran says, that the universe is in a constant state of expansion. Now let us look at the scientific discovery with regard to this. Firstly, how do they come to the conclusion that the heavens and the earth are expanding and how it correlates with what we are told in the Quran. In order to trace this, we need to go back to the year 1929 where a scientist by the name of Hubble was responsible for observing what is known as the galactic spectrum. He concluded that the heavens and the stars were moving away from each other at speeds ranging from the fraction of the speed of light to speeds close to the speed of light. Now how did he come to this conclusion? What scientists did or what he did was basically to take light and pass it through a prism. When light is passed through a prism it breaks up into its seven primary colors with the red at one end of the spectrum and the blue part of light being at the other end of the spectrum. Now when he observed the light from the stars and that light was passed through a prism there was a shift of the spectrum of light to the red area. This implied that the stars, the image that he was seeing of that star was an image of a star moving away from him. Any, if any image is passed through a spectrum, you get this, the, 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 uh, pass through a prism and the spectrum of light emerges, 
from red to green and if the spectrum shifts towards the blue area then it implies that the object is moving towards you approaching you if the spectrum of light the shift is towards the red area it implies that the object is moving away from you so the image of light that he saw from the stars there was a shift towards the red area which implies the stars were hurtling away from him so hence all the images of the stars which he observed came to the conclusion or pointed to the conclusion that these stars are moving away from each other there is expansion the heavens and the earth and the heavenly bodies are hurtling away from each other at tremendous rates now what we need to understand is that it is not the stars that are expanding into space because there is actually no space to expand into it is rather space itself that is expanding well to understand this uh, you know it's a difficult concept to understand i must say because we must think what is this universe it's space time space time because they they regard the the universe as four dimensional we know the three dimensions of space which is length breadth and height and the fourth dimension is time so this universe is actually a spatial temporal world which is space time and when this universe is created it is actually space time that was created that's a difficult concept to understand yes. because you cannot differentiate space from time just as you can't differentiate length from breadth and height because they are all part of one uh, four dimensions of our universe as we know it now to appreciate what we understand by the universe expanding perhaps an example would suffice if you take a balloon and if you blow it up and you mark on this balloon a whole lot of spots now this balloon would represent for us the universe at a point in time that is the universe and the dots that we mark on the balloon would represent the various galaxies of the various stars that are present in this universe when we say expanding universe what we do is we blow the balloon up now we notice as this balloon is being blown up we find that what happens is that the dots on the balloon all seem to move further and further away from each other so this would give you a very pictorial way in which how this universe is actually expanding that this stars are actually moving away from each other so the universe is actually getting bigger and bigger all the time i i think that's a very nice way of actually looking at it that gives us some kind of idea as to the expansion of the universe and this discovery as i've said was one of the most important in the 20th century and it has helped man to understand the origins of the universe but as we've said the quran has already mentioned this